Hi guys, it's Kelly Lenable here and I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today I am using the Just Because Stamps and Dies and then also the Classic Christmas. I'm just using the stamps for this, not necessarily the dies. And I want to be upfront with you, the Just Because set is on sale, but the dies are out. So I did use them, but um, you can't get them. So my apologies. Um, here I just wanted to show you a couple of light colors. I'm going to be using a neutral to create my background. And this is just a kind of a fun way to get a different look, even if you still love a clean and simple card. It adds some interest to the background. You can use any light color that matches your color scheme. I went with a neutral gray. This is actually Fairy Dust from W Plus 9 um, because I knew that I wanted to make my flowers super bright. Now, you're saying, Kelly, it's June. Why are you using a classic Christmas set? And I will tell you why. And it is because um, I believe in stretching your stamps and I believe in getting more out of the things that you purchase with your hard-earned money. And so this particular set does have Christmas sentiments, but by pairing the floral image with a sentiment from another set, you can turn it into a completely different card with a completely different vibe, and it doesn't have to be seen as a poinsettia. So here I'm just going through. I did stamp my image in the middle first, so that way I knew my whole background would be covered, and then I'm just going to work my way around the edges. That's also why I used my larger Misty. This is the original size Misty. Um, because I knew I was going to have to move my cardstock around and I needed to be able to put it all the way to the left or all the way to the right, which have you, so that I could fit all of my images. Now, I would recommend cleaning your stamp in between. I am lazy. I did not. Um, I didn't really have any issues as far as like double stamping or getting ink where I didn't want to, but for sure that may be a problem, especially if you decide to do this with a darker ink color. Um, but so just so you're aware, do that. Super simple way to create your own pattern paper. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp these in Copic Safe ink. I'm actually going to stamp two of them um, so that I have something to frame my sentiment. I chose a sentiment set that had a larger sentiment um, so that my flowers would really just be kind of accents to the um, large sentiment. So yeah, that's that. Um, I've been stretching my stamps for so long, like well before I was making YouTube videos, um, trying to see them differently, turning them, cutting them apart, um, not the stamps themselves. I know you can as long as you don't cut on the design. Uh, it's just something about it that gives me severe anxiety <laughs> about cutting the stamps. So usually I'm just like I mask them or, um, you know, use scotch tape. That I did that I do that a lot with sentiments if there's only a part of it that I want to stamp it. So for the coloring, um, I actually wanted to blend some color families. I wanted to do something to make it more interesting. Typically, I will tell you that if you are going to be blending color families to use um, colors that end in the same number. So in the beginning, I showed you a VO4, an RVO4, and a YRO4. Now, I know from my own personal experience that when I try to blend the YR04 and the RV04, it creates a much, much darker orange, and I don't get a great blend. So I switched to a Y38. Now, an 8 and a 4 are pretty far away, but because it's in the yellow family, um, well, yellow oranges family, I guess, it's a, the numbers play a little bit differently. Um, so just like when I do a rainbow, all of my colors end in four until you get to the Y's, and then I almost always use a Y08. There's just something about the way that they're formulated that in order for them to be dark enough to blend, um, I have to kind of go up a few numbers. But really the key to blending within multiple color families is saturation. So Copics blend in the fibers of your paper. You have to have enough ink down to get the colors to blend. This can be super challenging if you're working in a small area like this flower. Um, and so I'm really just going over it multiple times until I'm happy with the way that things are blended. Even then, it's not going to be perfection. And I'm totally okay with that. Uh, if that's something that bothers you, then maybe you might want to try a different color combination but I love purple and orange together. 
I just think there's something about one that sets off the other, um, even though purple and yellow are complementary colors, so orange isn't a far cry from that. Um, but I'm just going to keep going over this. I do choose to go take the orange from the outside of the petal to the inside, so that way I'm not going over the purple, um, because purple and orange kind of make a brown. It probably wouldn't be this it probably wouldn't be too bad on this card because the uh, violet that I'm using is more on the pink side, um, but it can get a little dicey sometimes mixing those colors. So I brought my orange in from the edge. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it about multiple color families and the blending. It's harder for me to get dimension when I'm doing multiple color blending, um, just because you know, the darks that you, I would use for pink may not necessarily blend into the lighter color purple I'm using or vice versa. Um, so for this particular card, because it did feel very flat, my flower felt very flat, I just ended up going in with a darker purple um, to, do, to add my dimension because that was my base color on each petal. And then I just blended that back out. So, um... I've been struggling to make videos. I've been struggling to really create it all um, just because of some of the things that are going on in the world and social media is very overwhelming for me right now. Um, plus like all of the things that are going on, you know, YouTube is supposed to be like your happy little escape place where like we come and we hang out and we tell funny stories and um, I don't have a whole lot of funny stories right now uh, because since coronavirus uh, started in March, you know, here really started affecting everything in March, um, and is still currently affecting things. I'm pretty much just going to work and then coming home. Um, I'm not doing much of anything else. Consequently, story time is a little hard to come by. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that it probably is for everybody else. Now, I'm not complaining. I don't mind. Um, it's just the kind of situation we're in, and I'm more of a homebody anyway. Um, so it's, it's okay. Uh, it just means that I'm limited on material to discuss on YouTube. So when I go to sit down to make a video, I honestly have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Um, now I did live a whole life, <laughs> um, before I started doing YouTube videos. So I could probably talk about some of those things. But usually when that happens, it's more organic. It's not like I don't sit down and, oh, well, I can talk about this or I can talk about that. Um, I usually just sit down in front of the microphone and then I talk about whatever I talk about to the leaves super quickly. So these leaves are already drawn with the lines in them. Now, I'm going to choose to play them up here just by accenting them with some coloring. You certainly could just color them, you know, with the inside line darker or the outside edge darker like either one of those things would be totally fine I decided that I was going to play up the lines that were already there and I'm just going to do that by using the very tip of my marker and kind of outlining them but always on the same side so for me I chose to go underneath the line um so then there would be you know that darker point and then out to the lightest for each individual section. Yes, I know they're small sections, but I think it looks pretty cool in the end, so I'm okay with it. Um, please forgive my allergies. It just is what it is. You guys know that by now if you've watched my videos. Um, there isn't a whole lot I can do about it. I've already taken my Zyrtec for the day, and uh, I take my prescription before I go to bed at night, and some days are just better than others. And apparently today is gonna be one of those days. Now, hopefully not too bad, because I have to leave for work in about an hour. Now that I'm starting the, um, you know, I'm not really starting, I've been there for a couple of months now, but I'm, I'm working 12-hour shifts, so it does mean that I have more days off, um, which is lovely. That is so nice. Um, but on the days that I do work, I have less time to pretty much do anything else. I've come home from work in the morning, I go to sleep, I get up. Typically, Eric has to go to work um, by the time he's waking me up, and then I hang out with Peanut until his dad comes and picks him up, and then um, I basically have about two hours to myself to shower, make myself dinner if I haven't done that yet, um, take care of the girls, all that, and then I'm off to work. So those days are much more 
there, there's just not anything happening. There's nothing going on in my life <laughs> because on those days, all I'm pretty much doing is sleeping and working. Um, for the detail here, I decided that I wanted to add just a little bit of white gel pen. Um, just something that, I don't know, would kind of add to the flower, make it look less poinsettia-like. Um, I, though I do feel the colors are already doing that. I just, I don't know, I think the little dots and stuff that you can add to things with a white gel pen are um, just super pretty. So I added highlights to the center of the flowers, and then I'm also going to outline everything just like I normally do because I love a bold black outline. I have the dies for this, and the dies for this are in the store, but I knew that um, I was going to want to trim out some of the leaves, that I wasn't going to use them completely intact, and because of that I didn't want the white outline that the die would provide. So here I'm just going to fussy cut these images out. If you've never fussy cut before, you want to hold your scissors in your dominant hand and then move the paper, not the scissors, move the paper with your non-dominant hand, it will give you a much smoother edge. So once I'm done fussy cutting them, um, I am going to outline everything, like the edges, with a um, water-based black marker. I use the Memento Tuxedo Black, but you can use anything you have on hand. The reason you don't use alcohol is because the alcohol will bleed into the rest of your image. So, I mean, really other than going to work, you guys know I've been working on my dining room table, um, which I finally have two coats of top coat on, yay. Uh, but I did run out of top coat, so now I'm to the point where I need to sand um, in between my layers, and then hopefully by the time I'm done with that process, um, my next round of top coat will be here. I'll be able to cover the chairs and be done with that particular project. Um, so, yeah, I mean, really, that's been what's been taking up the majority of my time outside of just regular, you know, household things that we all have to do, um, like clean and cook and laundry and, and all that fun stuff. Um, but honestly, like, the social media situation right now feels very, very overwhelming. Um, there's a lot of frustration and people feeling like they're not being heard um, and everybody has an opinion. Um, it's just, it's super overwhelming to me. Um, and I'm having a hard time with it. Um, so I, like, my beliefs come down to what they always have come down to, which is, um, you know, we are all God's children and God loves all of us. And you are to love your brother and sisters as Jesus loves you. That's it. That's for me. That That's bottom line. Um, and so when I get on social media and I see all of these people who are just so angry and so unkind, um, and you can make your point without being unkind. You can make your point without being nasty. Um, you can make your point without inciting a back and forth faith Facebook argument. Now, I am not trying, I don't, I'm not a proponent of lying down. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Like, there are things that are right, and that it's our duty to stand up for those, and it's our duty to um, have a loud voice for those that who, who do not. Um, but being nasty or being unkind or being malicious or being hurtful um, are not necessarily things that come into play. There is such a thing as righteous anger, being angry about those things which are right and just and morally, um, ethically, things that, that you want to to uphold, and there, there's nothing wrong with that, but it is the presentation. It is the presentation that I have such a hard time with. Um, so here what I'm doing is I am just messing around with my layout. I don't always leave this part in my videos because typically my videos are so long, um, but I just wanted to show you that everybody kind of struggles with this and everybody kind of takes time 
Um, so every card is different. Sometimes they just come together super fast and you know exactly how it's going to be laid out. And sometimes they don't. And for this, in this case, this one did not for me. I had to figure out which leaves I wanted to keep, how I wanted it to look. Um, originally I had wanted a flower to be kind of on top of the sentiment. That wasn't something that was working for me, as you can see here, because it was blocking too much of the lettering. So eventually I just conceded to the fact that it was all, they were both going to have to be under the sentiment and I was going to need to trim off some of the leaves, um, which again is no big deal. Um, you know, images are like, well, any stamped images, um, you know, you're meant to make the card your own. It should have a very specific flair to you. Um, and so, you know, after it's all stamped and everything else, which way you want to color it or arrange it or whatever is is strictly your style, whatever it is that you're into. Um, but anyway, so I have been kind of avoiding social media um, a little bit. And then also, as far as the videos go, I mean, not that people on YouTube, every once in a while I'll get a comment, um, but typically I, I don't. It's not anything people are bringing up here like they are on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, I had a lady who made a comment about a video, video I did a couple of weeks ago when I very sarcastically said um, that we were all being inconvenienced um, by the coronavirus. Um, apparently she does not speak sarcasm because she left me a message where she called me Karen and uh, told me she never watched my videos again. So I replied back to her uh, and let her know that I was being very sarcastic and I'm sorry that she misunderstood that um, because most of the time I try to take the high road uh, especially when it comes to people um, misunderstanding what it is that I'm saying I get sarcasm isn't something that everybody picks up on um, but the main reason um, that I haven't been necessarily doing YouTube videos is because um, I'm just creatively I think I, I don't have a whole lot to give it's a little bit of a struggle for me right now um, and then couple that with, I'm having issues with windows again. I'm sure you can probably tell by my audio, it isn't the same quality that it always is. It is the best that it's going to get right now. I can tell you that because I've tried several times to fix it. And for some reason this time, um, I haven't been able to find a clear cut fix to my problem. Um, so that was another reason why I wasn't really making videos because I was getting frustrated with not being able to do the voiceovers. So like right now this is one and I have two other videos that are already edited that I haven't done voiceovers for because A, I have no idea what I'm talking about and B, um, the quality of the voiceover is very frustrating for me at the moment. So with both of my flowers glued down flat, I put some foam tape on the back of my sentiment now, I did use the die. I told you guys that in the beginning. Um, you can certainly just use your scissors to cut around your sentiment, and that would totally work as well. Um, like I said, these are still available in the Neat and Tangled shop um, at a much discounted rate, and they're really great um, sentiments to have. Um, you know, it says the love you, hugs and kisses, um, just because more than anything, and then some cute hearts and X's and O's. In order to bring the whole thing together, I did use some of uh, the clear sequins from our mix there. And then, of course, I'm going to add shimmer because shimmer goes on all the things. And this is just some clear, um, I, can't, I can't remember if this one's Wink of Stella or, now nah, I think it looks like the tonic one. But I like them both and they're both clear glitter. So whichever one you have, use that. And then that's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you are having a wonderful week and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.